Hi, I am Ravi here. Today I am working on Toyota Corolla Elion 240, uh, 2003 manufactured car. Uh, this car has a one NZ FE engine, which is a 1.5 litre engine. You can see here one NZ FE engine. So, customer complaint is check engine light is lit and there is an engine miss too. Uh, the history of this car that the engine has been swapped with the junkyard engine due to oil burn in the previous engine. Anyway, you can see that raining at the outside. So, I apologize for the background noise with this raining condition. So, customer told that he got this issue after swapped the engine and several shops have tried to diagnose and fix it which were not successfully so today i'm going to diagnose this issue as always i hook up the scan tool and read the fault codes first i found a one fault code in the engine control module i will show you what it is here you can see that p1346 uh, vvt sensor or camshaft position sensor circuit range performance seems to be a timing related code uh, maybe bad VVT solenoid or cam position sensor. But customer told me that already an another shop has swapped the VVT solenoid and try, but nothing changed. So I would like to observe several data pits regarding this issue. But before that, uh, what about if we go to the bidirectional functions in the scanner tool and activate the VVT solenoid. So then we can deci decide that uh, whether VVT solenoid working or not and we can decide that the computer side and the wiring harness for the VVT solenoid is working or not. Therefore, I go to the bidirectional test here by tapping on the actuation test. So, we are in the bidirectional function. So, I tap on the control the VVT system bank one. So, I just go ahead and I need to just activate the VVT solenoid while engine is running. Uh, I just go uh, no monitoring data here because I don't need to monitor any data. I just need to uh, see or experience what is going on when I activate the uh, VVT solenoid. So I just start the engine and let's activate the VVT solenoid by uh, using the bidirectional function. Uh, sorry, I think uh, better we select the engine RPM data pit uh, as the uh, observation data pit while the uh, bidirectional function so I go backward and uh, select this activation test again and I select here uh, monitoring data and just I select engine rpm engine speed and then uh, we activate the uh, VVT solenoid here just tap on the on yeah do you see that what happened engine rpm goes to zero and engine was stalled that mean confirmed VVT solenoid is working and the computer side and the wiring harness integrity is okay. That is why engine was stalled. So I go backward and I would like to observe several data pits regarding this issue. So let me just load several data pits and uh, what is going with those data. So we are back in the data stream. I select here long term fault trim map sensor and short term fault trim and I would like to select data in connection with the VVT control system. So I got all those data and I go to the graph mode and let's start the car and see uh, what is going on there. Okay, engine was started and I can see after a while engine RPM is little bit high. Uh, so here you can see also long term fuel trim stay around minus 11% which is not normal. It is seems to be a bit high and uh, short term fuel trim also stay in the minus value. So this is not normal and uh, here we can't find the engine RPM. So I go back and select the engine RPM data feed. Um, do you see that engine RPM also not stable it is little bit fluctuating but and it stay around 800 rpm which is not normal in this uh, engine it should be around 650 or uh, 700 rpm so this is bit higher than the uh, expected value and another things uh, which i am observing here the map sensor data uh, really this map sensor data is way more high because 
this 1.5 liter engine i have seen that the uh, real normal value is around 1.5 1.6 gram per second at the idle without any load like without any electrical load but this is way more high so this is not normal so uh, there is something going on that means engine rpm is bit high and the air flow is bit high that means uh, much air uh, comes into the engine seems to be like that so we have to find about uh, what is going on with this data around 3 gram per second of air flow is pretty high at the idle obviously something going on so it might be intake cam is advanced when i compare this data with the p1346 fault code however as other shops tried many things i am not going to do those things again i would like to see the cam crank correlation waveform and see the timing as my next step because i am suspecting a timing issue with the cam sensor range performance code so here you can see already i have hooked up the oscilloscope and back probe cam and crank signal wires at the ecm pigtail let's go ahead and take cam crank correlation waveform we are going to see both VR type signals on the cam and crank signals. So I just go ahead and start the uh, recording here. You saw that the sine wave of signals on the both cam and crank signals. So I'm going to show you here that I got this signal without disconnecting this uh, VVT solenoid. So I save this signal which I took already and next I'm going to record the waveform cam crank correlation waveform again by disconnecting the VVT solenoid. So just stop the recording and I go to save this file. Okay, saved the file and let's go stop the car first and then disconnect the VVT solenoid and come back, start the car and take the waveform again uh, without the VVT sensor, VVT solenoid contribution. Okay, I just disconnect this uh, VVT solenoid and then uh, let's start the car and take the uh, waveform again without the VVT solenoid. This is very important because uh, you know that VVT solenoid can contribute the uh, cam angle advance and advance even at the idle. So if it is uh, advancing at the idle then it will be problem it will be a problem to see the right timing. So I got the both waveform with and without the uh, VVT solenoid contribution. So here uh, I just go backward and I need to uh, make a new waveform, make a new file. So here you can see it is being recorded. So we just record for a while and then stop and then I saved this file and I saved this file as the uh, uh, VVT sol without uh, VVT solenoid. Okay, that file saved and now we have both cam crank correlation waveform with and without the VVT solenoid contribution. So already I have loaded that uh, known good waveform from the rotakey.com for exact same engine. This is known good waveform. So here you can see it is uh, uh, 1NZ FE engine and good timing. So we can compare this waveform, this correlation waveform with our waveform first of all i will show you here again i can show you this is one and is it fe and non good good timing 
already you can see that the correlation mark has been set by the guy who provide this waveform into the library so just we need to count the teeth on this crank sensor i count here one two three four five six seven eight and nine nine keys away from the main key notch of the crank signal so let's count uh, onward to the right side from here one two three four five six and seven keys away from the right side so now we know the correlation of this known good waveform so let's go to the other waveform and see the correlation here so you can see here that uh, it is exact same waveform like the waveform which we show in the known good waveform we took from the rotkey.com so here i uh, place this cam and crank correlation point and then uh, put a ruler and let's see how many teeth away from the crank signal key notch and then we can compare it with the non good one okay i put the uh, two horizontal rulers on the cam and crank signal here same as the non good waveform so let's count uh, how many teeth away from the key notch of this crank signal let me align these rulers again uh, and then we will count it I count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 11. 11 keys away. So this side 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 keys away. So onward to the left 11 keys, onward to the right 5 keys. So we saw that in the non good waveform, uh, 9 keys away from the left side and uh, 7 keys away from the right side. So this is completely different when we compare with the non good waveform it is two teeth away from the uh, non good timing. So this is uh, definitely out of timing when we compare it with the non good waveform. So I calculate the timing in degrees so it was 20 degrees out of timing in our waveform when we compare it with the non good waveform. I checked the correlation on both waveform which we took with and without the VVT solenoid contribution both were out of timing in 20 degrees. So confirm this engine has a mechanical timing issue. I'm not going to open this engine. It is not my job. I just do diagnosis and electrical jobs. It might be a, a timing chain issue or stuck cam phaser. Anyway, as customer told me, he has a privilege to claim the warranty for this engine. Because this engine is under the warranty period yet from the junkyard. So my job is done. I was able to perform the power of the scope diagnostic without the oscilloscope it was hard to find case so that is what happened to the other shops and they were lost in the diagnosis so thank you for watching stay subscribed with us for more diagnostic videos